Can you be a Christian and believe in evolution? Can you trust that the Bible is true and also um, trust science? In my sermon of Sunday the 3rd of May, I promised some extra material to uh, address some of these questions. We read Genesis chapter 1 uh, through to 2 verse 3 and I preached about needing to take the context of this story seriously. So I argued it's not that helpful to kind of ask our 21st century question to this very ancient text and instead it's got its own message and its own points to get across. For example, that God is the creator who alone um, creates and is sovereign in his power. We can tell from this story that creation was very good when he made it and that God wants to dwell with what he has made. They are not really scientifically testable statements, but they are theological truths. Genesis 1 doesn't tell us how exactly God made everything, but instead it wants to tell us why God created things, what God is like, and for what purpose he created everything that is. However, we as 21st century people do have science questions, and most of us will know at least the basics of evolution theory. The theory of evolution, of course, is still developing, but in general, it's very widely accepted by the scientific community, as well as in the wider world. It teaches that all life has, over time, uh, a lot of time, billions of years, developed from a single source, from a single beginning. All living beings, plants, animals, human beings, have over time developed from shared ancestors through the process of genetic variation and natural selection. This evolution theory does paint a very different picture to Genesis 1 of a God speaking and thereby creating separate species into being just over the course of a few days. So can we believe in the Bible and in evolution? Are the two compatible or incompatible? Sometimes the impression is given by atheists that because we now have a theory of evolution, we don't need God as an explanation for life on earth anymore, so we can do away with God. But I think we can believe both in the Bible, and more importantly in God, and evolution. There are many Christians that do hold both. Uh, there are many theologians and Christian scientists that point out, as I have done, that Genesis answers different questions from the questions that science asks. Genesis is not an attempt to describe how creation took place. That is not a modern, not just a modern view, even Augustine in the third century pointed out that the creation story uh, tells the story in a way that people at the time, so many thousands of years ago, would have understood it. Calvin, the reformer in the 16th century, also points out that God accommodates himself in the language <clears throat> that we find in the, in the Bible and that God ad adapts to what we can actually understand at the time. We can compare it to how we might speak to a young child. We don't give you know, full detail and all the scientific information because they wouldn't be able to understand it. We try to explain things in simple language and highlight the main points rather than give all the detail. There are many Christian theologians and scientists who hold that evolution is the way the method through which God creates. Rather than the evolutionary process being totally random, they see this process as directed uh, and designed by God. They believe the evidence for the theory of evolution is too solid and sound to just deny, and that there's nothing to be gained by denying it. Instead, we can embrace both. 
you might call this evolutionary creation. Sometimes people have the impression there is a conflict between science and faith, between the Bible and what we know through science. They also assume that evolution theory means that there is no God or no need for a creator because it explains how things came into being. However, this is not necessarily true. It is still perfectly sensible to ask, where did life come from? And who designed this process of evolution? And is it being nudged along or steered along to a particular end? Why is there anything rather than nothing? And why does it all work so well? Science ultimately cannot answer these questions. It can only try to describe the processes and the evidence it observes and try to give explanations for it. Science cannot say whether there is a purpose to life or whether God is behind it all. In fact, there are many, including myself, that believe that the fact there is anything, any life at all, points to design and intent and that, that there is a God and a creator behind all of it. I'm sure I've not, in this few minutes, covered all of your questions, and I would highly recommend a website called biologos.org. Biologos.org. I will put a link in the text with this post. There are many useful articles, questions and answers to a whole range of questions that you might have about thinking together the theory of evolution, and the Christian faith, not just in general, but also very particular topics, for example, Adam and Eve, or the fall, how should we think these things through? And we'll go into those chapters um, on Sundays over the next few weeks. Uh, in our church in the months of January and February, and it was supposed to have also been March, we had a discussion group called The God Question, and uh, we met four times to explore these kind of topics. We had to cancel the last two sessions in March due to the lockdown, um, but the videos of the God Question course have now been made available uh, temporarily for free online. And again, I will post uh, a link to that in the post, uh, in the text of this post, and that's through the website Grasping the Nettle. Um, the videos of the God question are available for you to watch. Um, I hope you found this helpful. As I say, do like, look out these links to biologos.org and the God question. If you have any um, questions or comments, do feel free to post below and we can uh, engage in that. Or if you want, I could organise a Zoom meeting. Um, if people are interested to have a bit more of a discussion about these things. For now, thank you for watching and hopefully um, you'll come back on to watch our Sunday service for the 10th of May when we'll be looking at Genesis 2 and still looking back at Genesis 1 as well, particularly about the role of humankind uh, in creation.